There we go. Game started. Echo 4. Oh, I forgot. I have Microsoft Sam or whatever speaking the moves. I wonder how well he does with um, uh, Crazy House Drops. Try Echo to reach five. number 200. Well, Charlie I Green. guess. I guess we'll try. Fox draw six. We're just going to try to learn stuff here today. Bishop Charlie 4. I don't think knight takes pawn is any good there. Delta 3. Bishop Charlie 5. <laughs> Bishop takes fox draw 2 copy. I use the word copy instead of check because it sounds King cooler. Two. Yeah, no, black Knight is just Delta, four worse copy. here. Black doesn't have Knight anything. Takes Delta 4. Um... It looks terrifying until you realize he that anywhere Delta black four. could place a knight, um, white already knight controls. And white's threatening to place a bishop on e7. Um, if black could just check white, that'd be a completely different ball game. But yeah, here white's the one holding all the trumps with um, black having sacrificed a piece. Which gives white a two-piece advantage as soon as white can get the pieces onto the board. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to learn Delta from this six. one. Other than Crazy House is fun, I guess. Um, we could still learn that. Alright, so... Yeah, Pawn D6 is actually resilient here. Um... I guess I play knight h5, right? If I want to threaten stuff. Actually, wait, what's going to hold on to c7? If I play knight b5, black plays knight e6. I still want to try this. Bravo 5. I'm sorry, knight bravo 5. So I'm threatening c7, I'm threatening d4. Black could place a knight to protect this pawn. Um, but I don't think this is what Black was aiming for. Black could castle, although then I still have bishop e7. Oh, but... Castle gall. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, let's take the free Knight pawn. Bravo takes Charlie 7. Threatening to take a free rook. Rook Bravo 8. Echo 7. Yeah, that stings. Um, that's what convinced me to go for this line instead of the other line. Um, I could have just taken the deep on, but this is way more fun. Poor black. I think I outrate my opponent this game. Queen Delta Seven. I think. Right. So, black's trying to attack on the king side. Um, I could take the rook. Fox draw five. Let's throw this in first. Then we can take the rook and then take the knight and then maybe continue attacking somehow. Queen takes fox draw five. He takes fox draw eight equals queen copy. Echo 8 over. Yep, yep, yep. Well, that wasn't too hard. I think I lucked out with that pairing. Echo 4. Echo, Echo five. 5. Knight Charlie Knight 6. Charlie 6. Bishop Charlie 5. Bishop Charlie 5. Delta 6. Delta 6. Knight, Knight Fox, Fox trot 6. 6. Bishop Golf 5. All right, we had enough of these move announcements on my part. We'll just leave, Fox leave that to the pro Knight here. Delta five. I don't see what White's up to. Yeah, Knight climbing Delta the three. bottom few ranks is not going to be too hard. Castle Gull. None of my diagonal moving pieces Castle are under Gull. attack, other than this pawn. Uh, so that gives me a tempo to do whatever I want here. 
Echo six. Double threat. I don't know which is more effective. Bishop takes Charlie six. Right. So now you have four Charlie knights. Six. I have four bishops. Um. Hmm. This is tricky. Bishop takes hotel three. This looks fun. I'm not saying it's sound, but man, does that look fun. And yeah, you could take my bishop. You could not take my bishop. I don't really care. <laughs> All I care is that I got a free pawn there. Um, now, do I place a bishop on g3? Like, how do I continue this? Yeah, let's do that. All three. Let's just keep placing pieces on this side of the board until something good happens. One thing I've learned recently is that, you know, bishops and pawns aren't that different in this variant because the board is super crowded. Um, okay. So, I'm confused. I'm so confused. Everything's hanging. Which is how you know that I'm playing. Um, I don't have enough pawns to mate, so I should just take here. Box draw two copy. King takes box draw two. Okay, I did not expect that. That allows me to continue. Box draw four. Yeah, just placing stuff over here. I'm going to sacrifice a bishop whether white likes it or not. I maybe could have taken on g2 here. But I don't think these bishops are going to help. Uh, white in any respect. Just because all the white's pieces are poorly placed. Um, okay. Golf three copy. This seems fun. I don't know if this is sound or not. Actually, wait, I'm threatening G two now. So if black King Echo two. Yeah, white has to do this. And now I'm threatening the H five knight. Wait, no, I have to take this now. F takes Echo three. But now I have a knight in hand. Um Bishop. Fox draw four copy. Bishop hotel. So I'm threatening the H five knight, which is probably going to move. Echo three. Okay, we can do this again. I have no objection to repeating that sequence. Um. Delta four copy. That was a mistake on my part. King Echo one. Unless this mates. No, this doesn't mate. I just screwed up. Knight takes box draw. Queen takes box draw. I need an idea. Queen Delta one. Uh, I need an Bishop idea, and that's not it. Bishop takes box draw three. Oh, hang on. Knight. Delta four. Queen Delta one. This is bad. This is bad. Unless I can maybe... Oh! Okay, there's the mate in one. My opponent fell straight into it. Um, so what, what happened this game? This is too intense. 
This is much, much, much too intense. So, uh, no games found in this position in the map, in Echo the two. opening explorer. But, Knight C3. Knight um, Charlie 3. Wait, can I filter this? Yeah, let's get 2,000 and up players in there. So, Bishop C5 is the typical move. How about 2,200 and up? Bishop C5 still. Book move. Bishop Charlie five. Okay, yeah, my browser is lagging. I need to turn off that voice extension. Let me do that. And extensions, text to speech off. Maybe that'll improve performance. Um, so yeah, Knight of Six is Knight the way to go here. Six. Apparently, I'm. Tactics justify this stuff, so if they try to, Bishop like, win Charlie. material, Knight takes um, Echo this five. is what I was worried about. And what I'm hearing Bishop is that I should not worry about it at Delta all. Four, copy. Oh. Yeah, no, definitely I shouldn't worry about this. Okay. Yeah, our evaluation Bishop graph says that I'm three. basically winning the whole game, despite my flub in the opening. And that's taking too long to analyze, so let's just go back to playing the tournament. Maybe I should manage my time better. This has no increment. It's just straight 3-0. Oh, in fact, yeah, I've always advocated that Crazy House is best enjoyed, enjoyed without an increment. So, yeah, we've jumped up 1,000 places in the last two games, so we're doing fine. At this rate, we'll be in first place in two more games. Um, all right. Bishop Charlie 4. Uh, Knight Charlie 3. Somehow sounds more dramatic when Sam says it. Ooh, do I have Knight to Golf 5? I wonder. Oh, I use the 3D layout. That wasn't the answer you were looking for, though. Um, yeah, nobody uses the 3D layout, but I use it. Um... No, I actually find this helps me, believe it or not. It takes forever to get used to, because, like, most conventional online chess interfaces don't have 3D sets. But uh, once you get used to it, I think it actually helps quite a bit. I'm sorry if that doesn't favor our viewership, though. I've been asking for more beautiful 3D sets. Um, and so far, nobody's managed to come up with them. Um, all right, that's a free knight. Free with an asterisk because black does get to take a pawn, but yeah, no, that's a free knight. If not for that free knight, I just would have taken on e5, but free stuff is good stuff. All right, black has a pawn and a bishop. I've got two knights, and now I have two knights and a pawn. And if black plays the predictable d6, I advance my knight in here, and then I get a bishop in my hand. So it's not all knights or all bishops. I have some knights and some bishops and stuff. Um, this feels like a moment for me to try to find a brilliant move. Um, Actually, I have so many knights, I could just liquidate them all here. So, like here I'm threatening to do knight e7 again, and then take on c8. Oh, and then after I've taken c8, maybe start dropping pawns. I have only one pawn, but I can always take on b5 to get another pawn. Are we looking for a UX, UI guy for our development team? Um, I mean, we don't really have guys on the team, I guess. We just do stuff. Um, so if you um, propose a change to leech us and, um, I don't know, our lead developer, 
uh, Debo thinks it's a great idea, he'll accept it. I mean, I've done that a few times. Most of my work that I've done with Lee Chess has just been with the AI. Um, but, uh, yeah, if people feel like contributing stuff, they contribute as they will. And team members come and go pretty frequently. Um, so, yeah, it's a very, very open process. Um, although our lead developer gets to make decisions about what makes the final cut and what doesn't. So he's our beloved benevolent dictator who makes everything work. Um, so he'd be able to answer questions like that, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody's on our uh, Lee Chess staff enjoys being on it. Otherwise, they just take a break and come back when they do enjoy being on it. So um, it's pretty simple. <laughs> But yeah, that makes it difficult to answer questions like, well, how big is your team? And they're all volunteers. Um, it's not like any of us are compensated for stuff. Um. Boop. All right, so. That puts us into 881st place. Not bad. Uh, let's bring out the knight. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, I mean, people suggest ideas in the forum. I know in the forum there's a link to our Discord. People suggest things in the Discord channel. People volunteer to offer code sometimes, or people offer ideas, people offer all kinds of things. There's, um, not sure that there's much of a behind the scenes, as it were. It's all pretty public. Um, minus some of the things that are said by moderators about cheat detection or whatever, but almost everything um, that the staff does is like completely public. So, um, I know we have an issue tracker on GitHub. It has about a thousand open issues. Um, some of them are prioritized, some of them are not. Many of them require extensive Scala development experience. Um, some of them don't require any Scala at all. Some of them, it's all JavaScript or whatever. Um, I'm walking right into stuff here. This is not good. Well, this might be okay, but I don't like this. Ick. This would be better if I had more knights to attack. Like, if I were threatening a knight on f6, this would be so much better. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure that we have any plans or ideas. We just have open issues, and some of them are prioritized. Some of them are, hey, that's a great idea, but we'll never get to it. Um, I've submitted a few of those. Uh, but any UX or UI changes? I'm not, I don't know of any offhand. Um, But I'm sure there are some, I just don't know what they are. Alright, I guess I take this. Huh! You're really gonna let me take the knight and just repeat this? That's really weird, because you just plugged up the d6 square, or d4 square. Um. Here, I'll take the initiative. And I'll take it with a queen exchange. Or you can open up your king. Um, 
yeah, I don't know if black's going to trade queens and let me start attacking, or if black's going to not trade queens and let me start attacking. Either way, um, I kind of like this for white. All right, no queen trade then. I still get to attack, and I protect the d2 square in case they do drop a knight there. Um, kind of wish I had a rook to drop, though. Yeah, rooks are hard to come by, uh, he says, as he attacks two rooks at once. <laughs> well, okay, that puts my foot in my mouth. Um, rooks are normally difficult to come by. All right, I could just take the knight, or I could try to checkmate black. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna try the more enterprising of the two options. I don't know how this is gonna work. Ah, uh, well. No, let's just go back. That's a free knight, and I could place a knight on h6 and keep attacking. Ooh, another knight. Okay, I can take that one too. Um, that's a check. That's a check. Alright. That works. So, four wins in a row. I thought we were supposed to, with four wins, we were supposed to be in first. Because uh, two wins took us halfway up the tournament standing, so it makes sense that four wins would have put us at the very top, no? Or is that not how it works? Okay, that's a free pawn. That's a very free pawn. That's a pawn you're going to wish you'd never given away. Um, okay, so let's do this. There's no mate in one here, so I have time to do stuff like that. Um, wow. Okay. That's. I guess that makes sense. I just failed at predicting it. So I'm threatening pawn f2. Surely white will not allow me to get away with pawn f2. With mate on the next move. Um, Surely White will see that coming. Although it's not clear how White can completely stop it. White should at least put up some kind of resistance like that. Um, so let's just continue development. I'm trying to end up in a situation where um, I could just gain Tempe I can continue attacking things each time getting a free turn to do another attack. Um, right, so white has a pawn and a knight. I should not be completely reckless here. I should actually defend against some things. Although pawn e2 looks tempting. Pawn e2, pawn e7, takes, takes, check. My attack goes through first. Well, then heck with it. Let's do this. We trapped a bishop. The other idea I was thinking of was pawn drop at f2, but um, this crashes through pretty quickly. Um, this I was not afraid of, where I've just gained material and continued attacking. Queen takes is reasonable, um, but black's position is far superior here. Yeah, you can take my pawn. 
I expected that pawn drop, and I was going to counter with this. And now you could take queen takes bishop. Um, you kind of have to, because I'm threatening rook e1 mate. So I've got a rook and a queen in hand. So hopefully that's enough to do something. All right, I guess this is a double attack, hitting the bishop and threatening uh, to start attacking the king. I am running out of pieces, but I think what I have here should be enough. Check. Um, because I should be able to get enough pieces to start an attack here. Wait, white doesn't have any checks, so I should just take a piece. And this threatens bishop g4 mate. This feels way more enjoyable than shogi. Having played both and not having much experience with shogi, this seems pretty enjoyable. Um, Alright, so five wins in a row. We're scaling our way to the top. A viewer suggested that we should try to get into the top 200. Um, maybe I should try that. How about the top 500? Let's set our expectations low. All right. Ooh, is he gonna sacrifice? Yeah, it's that early sacrifice is no good. So I welcomed him to tr welcome him to attempt it, but it won't work out. Um, I am gonna do this. Oh, now now the sacrifice is just amazing. Um, I think. I'm not totally sure. Actually, I protect this bishop. So... Yeah, no, actually, I think I come out ahead on this. Surprisingly. I have a bishop. He has a pawn. Um, so we're going to stop pawn at f7 by putting our bishop there first. And we'll see if this extra pawn of blacks does any good. It might. Um, actually, that's quite a good move. Um, hmm, forcing me to return the material. I'm not a fan. Um, here, let's do it this way. Actually, I didn't have to return anything. I just got him to place his extra pawn on a square where he didn't want to put it. If I had a pawn, I could just place that pawn on b7 to win material. Okay, so what's Black's idea? Probably not giving up the knight. Um, I'm going to wager that was not part of Black's idea here. So now I got this, winning a queen. Um, yeah, no, black is hosed. <laughs> black is super hosed here on account of having no knights to attack with and being down um, material. So, this is check. And I guess, I don't even know if I want to take the queen, because that kind of slows down my attack. Um, like, this knight is superb. I'd rather just keep the knight keep attacking if I could. I'm guessing king e7 is played. And I think after king e7, taking the pawn on g7 is actually better than trying to collect the queen. Only because I don't see a mate after taking the queen, but if I keep attacking, something positive should come of it. Uh, 
<sighs> yeah, Black's in a dire situation having nothing in hand. <laughs> Possibly Black is disconnected here. Oh, no, never mind. They're still here. They're still fighting. Depending on your definition of the word fighting. Um... I want to just take the free pawn, honestly. Only because I don't see a way to keep attacking after I take the queen. And I don't like the idea of giving him a knight. So let's just take free stuff. Huh. I wonder. So he only has a knight. Alright, we'll take that. There goes Crazy Monk. Huh, I wonder why it doesn't say that I'm streaming. I am live, right? I think so. But yeah, our goal today will just be to take 500th place. Whoa, is this any good? Um, I don't have an attack here, do I? Let's try this. This looks sharp. This looks really sharp. I don't know that I would have played this with black. So, yeah, have I missed a tactic here? Or am I just threatening all kinds of fun stuff? Because it really feels like I'm the one making all the threats in this position. I know he does get this one check on F2, but um, I don't think that changes anything. And now I get to attack? Right. So, um, do I have a queen trap? I don't. I have one bishop and two pawns in hand. I should have something here. I just don't see what. I mean, he has pawn e2 if I'm careless, so I should do something about pawn e2. That's disgusting. He's also got pawn c2. I guess, wow. Um, I guess this is what I'm doing here. I think I'm okay. <clears throat> I think I'm surviving this.
Yeah, maybe next time I shouldn't play this. Maybe next time I should play something better. Okay, we'll take this. Get out of harm's way. That's mate in one. Alright, well played. Uh, how did I mess this up? I'm very confused. Like, what? Possibly everything, but what specifically was bad about this? E5 looks sharp, and it is sharp, and it has been played before. And I'm apparently the first person to lose in this opening. Oh, King H1. What's so great about King H... Oh. Black just doesn't have anything. So... Okay. King takes F2 is just a disaster. Um, okay, apparently I just can't calculate for beans. Um, this is crushing because if Rook takes... Um, I have this check, and Black has to block, and I don't know. I'm still winning. Um, yeah, if the rook blocks, then I have um, pawn here, and this wins easily. So bishop takes, king h8 would be forced. Um, but after king h8, then what? I don't see it. Pawn h6, <laughs> bishop f6. Wow. Okay, that's sharper than anything I was considering, but... Yeah, my king takes f2 as a complete and total lemon. Um, if not for that, I might have had far better chances than in the actual game. So let's try... Well, that was me experimenting with the Italian opening in Crazy House, in that one very specific position where I think some aggression is warranted. Um... Okay, so white's development is slow here. I could have just taken the pawn. Instead, I opt for a more aggressive solution. <laughs> um, I mean, this is fine for black. Because I gain another tempo, and then I... Well, he might not move to a light square. I can't guarantee that. Yeah, okay, he doesn't move to light square, but this is fine. That wasn't so hard. Um. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's just take it. I could have dropped on g2 before taking the queen. I'm not sure if dropping in g2 first made any difference. Um, I want to assume that it did, but I just don't know. Here, let's have some fun. <laughs> really? You're just going to let me take that. Um, okay. So I've got a knight in hand. And an amazing attack going. Although I should have just dropped on g2 again. What am I doing? Here we go. Let's attack with check. This is check. Contact checks are amazing in this game. Why am I not doing more of them? Alright, so yeah, we're top 500. Um, yeah, I should just play more contact checks. I like doing that one on g2 there instead of allowing the king to safely run away to h1. I don't know what I was thinking.
so it's pretty clear I don't know uh, King Pawn Crazy House Theory. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, that does prepare Rook G8. Um, what makes, what gives me pause is that I get this in for free. And, okay, even if I don't take the queen, this is crazy. Like, okay, I've seen this line where you end up trading the queen for all the pieces, and that's pretty okay. But trading the queen for a single bishop is probably not as good. Um... Okay, so if I had a pawn, pawn at e7 looks great. Um, hmm, the only way I can get a pawn is by sacking on b7. It still might be worth doing. Wait, why am I not just, like, adding another piece to the fire? Now, f uh, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, that's definitely an attack. Um, I forgot about that. But now he has no pieces in hand, so let me place my remaining piece. Two can play that game. You put a bishop on e2, I put a pawn on e7, or a queen on e7. I have pawns on the brain, but, um, yeah, queen here is pretty good. Um, okay, that pins the rook. also threaten some fun stuff, so we'll see where we go. Like, I have a smothered mate threat if he's careless. Um, because I can do queen takes rook at any time. Uh, right, so he has to do something about that smothered mate, and he does. Now I could take a8. Uh, is that best here? Yeah, taking the rook looks good. Let's take it. So now the smothered mate, um, it's got to still be there with like knight f7. I don't exactly see where it is, but it's got to be there somewhere. A rook and a queen are pretty much of equal value in this position, so that's why I was willing to part so quickly with my queen. Um... Okay, so we pin the rook again, still threatening knight f7, adding in knight to d8. This is a pretty great position. I want to say this is inspired by shogi and all the crazy tactical stuff you can do in shogi. I expect him to play d5 to just defend his rook, but I don't think it's good enough. I think is, yeah, I think that's forced. Um, so, what now? I should have a plan here. I should definitely have a plan somewhere around here. Okay, we'll just take the free bishop. So I ran out of attacking pieces, because I messed up somewhere. Um, still, that was not a terrible result. It was an okay result. Um, I 
I do need to play faster here. That doesn't work. Or at least it's sketchy. Uh, I'm losing my queen with check. Except he's not taking it. Alright, we got him. Easy. Not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that's what a 1900 at Lee Chess Crazy House plays like. This is the way we two played. That was not an easy game. Who was that with? That was with Kapariva Chess. That was a fun game. Alright, let's do one more and then wrap it up and... I see two other people are streaming this same tournament, so me doing the same thing doesn't make too much sense. But it was a fun little occasion to play some Crazy House. Okay. Why did I do this? This is not very good for black. Um, why did I do this? Oh, this might be okay now. That spare tempo uh, might prove very useful. Alright, so how do I defend this? How do I defend it all? I don't know. Do I just drop F7 and say forget it? Yeah, let's drop f7. What's the worst that could happen? I didn't think he'd do that. I really didn't think he would play this way. Because now he's out of attacking pieces. He doesn't have any checks, and he's lost the center. Meanwhile, basically everything's going right for me. Um, I didn't think this would happen. But hey, we'll take it. We can wrap this up on a win. Well, let's do so. Um, okay, let's see if he puts the pawn on e4 like I think he will. Oh, that's not a pawn. So my point was that this hits e4. Um, I was kind of expecting that just be a pawn, so I could like place the pawn on e2 and just keep attacking. But um, actually, I have a pawn. Why did I do this? Why not just immediately take here? Um, I had to go about things the complicated way. When really this is just so much simpler. Um, okay. So now basically his everything is hanging. Um, oh, I thought I had knight to e f3 as a threat here. It's really not much of a threat. It's a very veiled, empty threat, um, which only becomes a real threat if he actually gives me another knight. Um, although this is far better than just taking the knight. So he can block at the bishop, but then this is mate. All right, well, that was... No, we have to have one more. We can't end it there. One more. Uno mas. Gotta break the 400 barrier, apparently. Uh, 
Um, yeah, let's just develop these pieces. Um, do I have a Legal trap here? No. Legal trap involves the bishop on h5, not on g4. Um, the bishop has to be on h5 because otherwise knight takes e5 just refutes it all. Um, okay. Yes, you did gain a free tempo there, except it's not really free because you have to defend this. And that. Oh, another free tempo though. You're right, that is actually free tempo. But I'm still developing each time you take my pieces, so... Okay, so I'm threatening knight here. And yeah, the free tempi train comes to an end. Um, although, arguably, maybe black's gotten the better of this. Because a single rook, what good's that going to do me? Um, the best I can do is try to rescue the knight, which... <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, 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 that's like the last move I would consider with black there. Like, every other move seems more reasonable than that one. Okay, go ahead. You won the night. Congratulations. Okay, we have to end it there. That was just too good. I apologize to Jockin for, um, having too much fun with this one. Um, yeah, that was an interesting opening. I wonder what happened. So this is actually, if black plays bishop e7, that's just better for black. Uh, white should play d4 here. Or white could open knight c3 instead. Um, like if I'm going to play both knight c3 and bishop c4, apparently I should play this first. Um, and then black can counter knight f6, and then I can play bishop c4. What's so terrible? What happens, though? Uh, d6? I've got to add d6 to my repertoire with black to just figure out what's going on there. But uh, apparently, if white doesn't play d4, this is great for black. And if white does play d4, this is acceptable for black. As long as you find knight e5. Um, oh, I guess white could also take on f7 and then take d4. Um, whoa! Okay, this looks like this does not get very, um, very much use. However, here's a game between Joannet and Blitzbullet playing this opening. Um, so Blitz Bullet just played bishop e7 and just ran away. This is an actual three minute crazy house game. How did Juana not win this? I don't know. Um, that's kind of surprising. Probably because pawn f5 is just bad for more reasons than I can count. Um, probably anything else is much more solid. Which leaves up in the air the question of uh, is d6 any good? Let's look at this. Uh, Stockfish prefer. Oh, well, they transposed for, via funny move order to this, but. Um, yeah, so d5 is apparently reasonable here. No. Huh. Well, okay. So what if we actually play the main line? d4 takes, takes, takes. Bishop takes f7 here. Apparently this is okay for black. Um, king takes. Uh, queen takes, and then what? Oh, the actual move in the game, bishop e7. 
Uh, so we transpose into this position, which is apparently better for black because white doesn't. Um, white has a knight in hand, but which means that black is up two pieces. So yeah, um, that's curious. I never would have guessed. But yeah, if I'm going to add d6 to my black repertoire, I should look more closely at all that stuff. Because there's the off chance that an opponent might actually play something sharp there. Instead of just... I mean, we could do this exchange, and then knight e5 is fine for black, apparently. Um, and you just play chess here. Oh, rook g8. Okay, well that's worth knowing, too. Huh. I would not have guessed. In any event, this has been an interesting event here. Hope you've enjoyed it. Go watch the other participants um, and take care. Uh, see you next time.